you know, a while back, um, I went to drugs to relieve my pain. Well, yeah. You know? And I, like I, you I, said, either, either the knife yeah. or the prescription. Yeah. No, it wasn't prescription drugs. Or if all you can get it was is a bottle definitely of Definitely. Yeah, and that's what you use. The pharmacist in the truck. It's <laughs> no vacuum regulator. Find it somewhere else. <laughs> So, <laughs> you had cut me out. so you became an addict, but it's hard to even know if addiction was already prescribed, you know, addiction came from here, okay, it came from your family, didn't it? Yes. Because addictions run in families. And guess what else runs in families? Jerks, nice people, um, chaos, Money. dysfunction. I mean, that, exactly. Yeah, so like an addiction is, you know, we're all terrified of addiction, but we're, we're really all addicts to something, right? I mean, I'm an addict to ice cream and a few other things, and, and love, you know, I, I, I want that love hormone, I, I want to belong and, and contribute and, and, and be heroic or something like that. So like I'm addicted to, or to adrenaline, you know, I'm an ER doc, kayaker, and, all that sort of thing. So all that is like stuff you were actually born into. It doesn't mean you're not responsible, but um, all right, so your family history of addiction, and then you go through here and you go, look, I just want to feel some belonging or some comfort, and you go to, uh, to using. Well, the, the good news about going through the addiction grinder is you either die or recover. Well, you're here, so you're in recovery. So what happened? in your recovery. Tell us about that. That's a miracle. How did I recover? Yeah. I went to rehab. Yeah. Okay. From what were you addicted to? Meth. What? Meth. Go. Oh, okay. All right. So, what do you think about that? So, <laughs> rehab tells you that you did the 12 steps. You got some insights into how you were wired. You got some, you, you put some of your past behind you. Um, you were able to realize that you could only control a certain number of things, like that which is very close to you and not everything yeah. that's far away from you. Um, and you also probably did it for your family because you got children or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, children give you reasons to go to rehab. I right? became a meeting junkie. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. better than a drug. So you went to meetings. I'm a meeting junkie. I go to five Allen on meetings a week. I would do about 14 a day. Good. And what'd you get out of all that? Um, it, <clears throat> it was the belonging, like you said. Yeah. It's the creating a new environment, yeah. a new... I mean, you really, you're with people that you're know what you're going yeah. through. You're really onto something. Because... Yeah. In fact, there's don't a, know it, they don't. There's a recent, there's but, a recent study but about that. You could go to meetings, and that's you also can, you can hide their too. best hookups. Yep. <laughs> that's where you go. The you know, oh, thirteen steps. Yeah. 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 Came up the car here. Yeah. Yep. So you know, depending on how strong you are, or or how weak you are. Yeah. I mean, the thing about the, the thing about rehab and the twelve steps is that it gets you in touch with your vulnerability. Then you got to be vulnerable. Then you got to build boundaries instead of walls. And when you're building busy building walls all your life to protect yourself against all this pain, then you need a, some relief. Uh, then you knock the walls down, and then you're just completely vulnerable, like Darth Vader without his mask. So then you've got to create some boundaries, which is what the twelve step program will do for you and grow up or mature or not need so much of other people's love of you and then you start to love yourself and then all of a sudden you're not going to 14 meetings and you're better and something happens and you grow. So um, I got this off the newspaper today and Jenny I didn't get it to you in time um, to print but this lady her name is Kayla Mueller and it was just Wednesday's newspaper on the Reader's, Reader's Alley thing, um, it says, some people find God in church, some people find God in nature, some people find God in love, I found God in suffering. 
I've known for some time what my life's work is, using my hands as tools to relieve suffering. Kayla Mueller. I, I don't know where that came from. I'm going to zoom right into it. So, <laughs> so suffering, uh, so you've done a lot of suffering, and what does suffering leave you with? I think it leaves you with compassion, you know. If you haven't suffered, you don't have compassion, which is kind of what you've encountered is like zero compassion because nobody's had what you have because it's so fucking rare. And it's like, you don't get any compassion because nobody's got what you you've say got. You say, do you get any support? I say, well, I would call it negative support. Yeah. That's, you know.